Okay, this is MXUX. Charging defines the BEV market in the USA. This is for the USA only. Tesla has a substantial and surmountable lead in top market segment, which is CAH, charge at home, and is moving fast on new charge outside of home, COH, a center concept. Um, this is going to go over how important charging is to the total addressable market uh, for testable, uh, Tesla and other uh, BEV manufacturers. Let's just move on to the first slide here. Um, this is CAH USA, Charge at Home USA. These are people who can charge at home at night when they're not using the vehicle. And this is optimal ownership. Now I have charge at home households. Household could be an apartment, a condo, a house trailer, an individual home, an apartment building, uh, you know, an apartment in an apartment building, so forth. So this is not houses, this is households. In the United States, there's 128 million total households. And we're assuming that each household is going to own a car, although that's probably not correct. But let's just, for the sake of <clears throat> discussion here, say that that is true. Um, of these households, I have uh, forty percent, which is fifty-one million. Okay, have two hundred plus amp service coming into their home. So their main breaker box, the main breaker in that breaker box is 200 amp or higher. And these are new, newer homes built in the last, you know, I would say 15 years, something like that. This is the, the, the best you can do in America as far as charge at home. This will give you level two and above charging with no problem. You don't have to. All you got to do is put the charger in. You, you don't have to do anything else. This will work with the Tesla, the GMC Lyric, Cadillac Lyric, other OEMs. So <clears throat> this is this is the optimal, okay? And this is uh, a single-family home, condo, um, so forth, where you have 200 plant uh, plus amp service accessible for your charger. Uh, that's 40%. That's 51 million. I have calculated previously that this, this market is like 10% of this 51 million. Let's just say 5 million vehicles a year. And in my past analysis, I said Tesla's going to sell, uh, 4 million of those, uh, vehicles a year. And these other people here, they are going to get one million a year to split between them that's my call so this is the optimal i got this big arrow here this is the sweet spot this is the cream of the market now as you move down market the next segment is 100 amp service or less okay and um these are people that have a home that has uh, 100 amp service, which is common in older homes or less. They can have 60 amp service. Even, you know, an old home might have 40 amp service. Okay. Um, I'm making an assumption here that um, this is going to limit the charging to a regular outlet, 110 or 120 volts. Uh, without doing a major upgrade of this uh, service. What this is going to do is these, the Tesla, this and this, um, they're not going to work right with 110 volt charge. They're just not going to be able to charge enough overnight. They may be able to do it for a day or two, but if you're using the vehicle on a regular basis, it's just not going to work for you. After a few days, you're not going to be able to use it. Um, so you're going to have to uh, go to outside charging, charge outside of home. But if you don't want to go to outside charging, you've got some choices here. The Lordstown Endurance pickup truck 
can charge. It's got a small enough battery that it can charge on 110 or 120 volt regular house current. Uh, the same goes for the Aptera. The Aptera can also uh, charge overnight with a 110 volt uh, uh, charger because it's got a small enough battery. These are efficient vehicles. Same with the Archimoto, okay? And, you know, you have your e-bike, and I have e-scooter here, and I don't mean a two-wheel scooter. What I mean is like a, a Vespa-style scooter, which they're making their um, appearance uh, across the world now. Um, but, you know, you could include a scooter here. I think that the main takeaway from this is uh, if you have less than 100 amp service, these are the three vehicles right now that really are going to work for you. And you got the Aptera, which is enclosed. The Archimodo is open. And then you got the Endurance, which is a, a regular vehicle. And this, I think, is a key selling point for the Endurance. But let's move on. So let's. This is, uh, this is implying that you have a home or you have a condo. You have somewhere you can park, okay, where you can have access to a private charger. When you have street parking uh no access at home or you're a renter uh let's say you're street parking um you're gonna have the aptera that's gonna be about the only thing that's gonna work for you without frequenting uh, frequenting uh third-party charging services on an optimal basis to which uh, you should be able to get enough light in a favorable client uh, climate uh, to keep this Aptera charged for a normal uh, driving um, uh, during the course of a week or whatever. And same here, okay? Um, so anyway, uh, oh, let's go back here. Sorry. Anyway, um, so the Aptera is going to work for you here. Now, the light year is coming out. It's $100,000. Forget it. E-bike, e-scooter, these are things you could put in your apartment. Now, I think the important takeaway here is this is the charge outside a home, okay? This is 60% of the market. This is 7.77 million. Let's say this 10% of this becomes uh, 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 the uh, electric uh, BEV ver uh, portion of this market. So that's 7 million vehicles, and these are the most well-adapted vehicles to this market, and the Aptera is the most adapted to the street parking market. The point I'm making is this is also, this is the next tier down. This, this, is, this can be a big market segment. It could be bigger than the charge at home market. Uh, depending on how you split this up, but um, uh, between these two, um, let's say, uh, well, it's hard to say at this point because there is no good data on how this breaks down. But anyway, as you can see here, um, the charging uh is what defines the total addressable market for a battery electric vehicle and i think uh people that are looking at the entire market becoming electric soon i think really this 40 percent and 51 million is the max you know adoption and that's going to be 5 million units a year and i think tesla's going to take that then when you move down into this next segment, let's say between these two, um, 7 million, because this street parking is going to limit a lot of uh, optimal ownership. You're going to have to use third-party chargers all the time. Uh, these three vehicles, in my opinion, have a, a very good chance of um, having a market niche there. Let's move on to the next slide. Now, this is the charge outside of home market in the USA. And this is suboptimal ownership. Again, this is not perfect. This is uh, non ideal. Okay. 
charge outside of home households or equivalent and this is the same figure this is 60 percent of the total households or 77 million um now i have down here tests again the big arrow points to the prominent one tesla only private charge stations and charge centers six percent of uh the total charge uh, uh stations that are out there now it's uh, uh 1400 total and growing now uh tesla level two and above tesla has 908 presently and uh, they're adding 500. now these are tesla's a lot of them are travel locations are very abundant and that's the uh, the majority of these chargers however i will link at the end of this uh, particular uh, video um, they're opening up urban charging centers okay and I have an Easter egg uh, for example they're going to be adding about 300 uh, chargers uh, level 2 level 3 in Los Angeles over the next year so Tesla is uh, working on this uh, urban charging center concept to take this next level of the market which is the charge outside of home market uh, in these urban centers in these I call them Tesla yuppie urban centers where you have high income professionals living in an urban market such as Los Angeles they're living in an apartment they're living in a condo and they don't have access to charge at home Tesla is moving quickly uh, and they're starting to perfect this urban charging center concept and they had mentioned uh, a diner concept uh, or showing movie clips and these types of things I again I have a video I'm gonna shoot another one on an urban charging center they're just putting up the the, uh, the reason I have the arrow pointing here uh, to Tesla uh, these are these are Tesla only private charge stations uh, so they're going to be able to manage them better uh, as far as access and so forth and upkeep uh, there are mo they're not just two or four these are like 40 to 60 chargers per location and these are urban center uh, charging centers and these are in uh, safe locations well-lit locations central locations to where the populations of owners live so this is i believe uh tesla already leads in the charge at home market and i and i do believe they're going to lead uh, in this urban charging center market now the next segment of this uh charge outside of home um, market is the the public retail and municipal markets okay and these are chargers that are in parking decks or you know in the back of a hotel or wherever they may be there are 22,000 of these chargers in america right now electrify america is one brand that comes to mind charge board blink these types of station uh so that's 90 94 percent of the total uh but again these are public versus Tesla's being private and these are generally sometimes one or two or maybe the maximum of four uh, chargers in a spot where Tesla is placing these large uh, you know 40 plus charger uh, stations uh, urban charging centers uh, in uh, and they're they're, they're going to be very nice the one they're building now in uh, santa monica which i have photographed uh in a video uh i'm going to get a picture of the finished uh, charging station totally different from this uh your municipal chargers are going to be in parking decks you're not going to want to be in them late at night most of them are closed late at night uh during the day they're busy um 
again, I'll use Santa Monica as an example. The municipal uh, chargers in Santa Monica, and really, there are no retail, very few uh, charge point or blink chargers in Santa Monica. Right now, uh, Tesla is the only one that has any uh, charging, you know, charging stations in Santa Monica. The rest of these really aren't represented. Um, so the so in Santa Monica, you're li limited to municipal. Uh, and again, this is a parking deck. You don't want to be there late at night. You don't want to be there by yourself. And uh, generally, the charge is free or relatively low cost. Uh, at least it has been up until now. That certainly could change. Absolutely. Um, they could raise the charge rates on these municipal charges. I think that's something that's going to happen. Um, but the point is not, and you got to pay for parking. Okay. So you got to go to charge. Depending on how long it takes to charge, you get X amount of minutes free, but at some point you're going to have to pay for charging. So you go out and have dinner, you come back, you know, you're going to have to pay 20 bucks to park plus, uh, so it's going to cost you minimum 20. If the municipal lots start charging, it's going to cost you 20 plus the charge. So, you know, you could, you know, could go up. Um, so 94% of the total chargers are public and municipal, retail, municipal chargers. 33% um, of them. Okay, one third, seven thousand three hundred, are in California because California is the largest EV market in the United States. So, um, this is less than optimal ownership. This is what the federal government is pushing. I I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this is a well, certainly not an optimal solution. It does work. Um, but uh, I think the Tesla private uh, multiple charger scenario is much better than this public retail. Although it does work, it is uh, cumbersome, I would say. I do know someone that has a Tesla who uses public chargers, and it does work for them um, so far. Let's just go. Uh, so you're going to have level two and above maybe level two and above you don't know what you're going to get uh with these public chargers um or how they're going to be throttled and so forth that's yet to be determined um anyway you have gm ford the oems uh, so forth um uh, tesla owners that uh, don't have a a tesla you know, proprietary uh, charger lot so forth um, you know, the, the problem with these is availability, you know, usually they're grouped now in the, the municipal parking deck in Santa Monica. Uh, I know they have probably 15 or maybe 20. I think it's more like 15. Uh, they're usually full on the weekends, on the, on the busy days. If you went on off hours, uh, you could do it. Um, Again, there are no other ones I know of in Santa Monica other than the Tesla uh, ones that are uh, coming online and uh, the ones that already exist in their, uh, by their store, which are on the rooftop on a parking deck as well. <clears throat> so, you know, are they going to be available? You know, they have apps and so forth. People complain about getting to the chargers, having them not be available when they're listed as available and so forth you know what type are they there's a melange of different types across the country you know are they operational many people report getting to these chargers and finding that they don't work uh or you know that they're difficult you, you have to basically join all these uh, charging networks to use these chargers and it can it can get cumbersome on that level as well. Also, now there's, you know, I believe ChargePoint is owned by the people that put it on their property, and they may charge what they will uh, for the. I think it's ChargePoint. I don't want to misquote that, 
they can charge what they want for the charge and there's been complaints of, of price gouging so you can see that these are um, more plentiful they are the majority of uh, chargers <clears throat> in the United States right now but there's a lot of disadvantages to charge outside of home and uh, doable less than optimal again as a choice between the two I believe the Tesla model is so much better and again out of this segment with this model they're using I think they're going to take the cream out of this segment of the market as well um, another uh, place that you can charge outside of home is work a lot of uh, places have chargers at work where you could charge during the day while you're at work um, level two and vehicle to grid uh, things now there's there's different types here we're, we can talk about an office where you come in and there's chargers there and you go to work in your office and you come out you can also talk about the fleet application here where the fleets are out during the day either a Hertz rental or UPS or whoever it was and then they come back at night and they uh, charge up um, the uh, oh, excuse me let me just go back to that slide again the um, so I have level 2 and V to G charging this could vary um, there aren't a lot of installs of this right now. There is no good te there is no good uh, measurement of of how this is working uh, that I could find. Or maybe someone can put it in the comments. Uh, but these are for uh, battery electric vehicles. Now, on the fleets, um, the light duty Lordstown Motors Endurance. I believe has an advantage uh, with the uh, the fleet segment here okay um, this uh, battery is less onerous to charge the endurance can be fitted with a uh, vehicle to grid uh, concept where they could sell electricity back into the grid uh, versus the, something like the Ford Lightning which has a battery I don't know twice the size of the endurance uh which is uh, more onerous to charge and so on and so forth i think uh, again the lordstown motor uh fleet application for light duty medium duty pickup trucks is a real winner in this segment okay out of this 7.7 uh, .7 million how many how much would it be we don't know but i would uh suspect that again we don't know what this is but we know the total market here is 7.7 .7 million anyway uh so you have last mile delivery here amazon and you have the u.s postal service which is now pushing to go to bev after they're reconsidering their oshkosh horrible oshkosh uh, decision under the you know incompetent postmaster that's in there now uh, the problems with the uh, work uh, at the office or at the work site availability for battery electric vehicles you know how many offices have uh, these chargers installed you know they're not mandatory right now in a place like California a lot of these enlightened companies might have them in the Midwest not so much um the battery electric fleets again you saw hertz was going to buy a hundred hundred thousand uh bevs but the, none of them are installed yet so we have yet to see how this is is to develop uh this particular market oops sorry this particular market but i think a bright spot here is uh the lordstown endurance of course the it should be the first i believe it's going to be the first in production i think it's it's better than the uh ford lightning uh, for a number of reasons 
And I don't think the Silverado is going to be around till 2025. I think the Lordstown Endurance could uh, could take these this light medium duty fleet market by storm. Uh, last mile, you know, UPS, a U.S. Post Office. Again, Lordstown has a high top van, uh, which is going to be their next product, which will address these two segments as well, with the same efficient battery and B, uh, V to G uh, capability. I think Lordstown has a, has a good shot here. Um, but just to, to recap all of this, um, if we look, if we go back to the previous slide, uh, the charge at home market. I believe that uh, Tesla has this this market. Uh, they're going to take. Uh, I think ten percent of this is going to be BV, and they're going to take four million cars a year here. This is sixty. This is seventy. This this is seven. Let's say eight million vehicles a year. Um, how much of that? Will the endurance Aptera and Archimodo change? Archimodo is going to be in a good climate. Probably Aptera too. The endurance is set here at 55K, can charge at 110. Light to medium duty pickup truck. This, I think, is a segment uh, that they can, they can really work in. Aptera as well uh, for a commuter vehicle. Like I say, the new VW Bub. And again, uh, no, no street parking in a good climate. Aptera again. So I see the future for these brands. But uh, charge at home, definitely Tesla. Charge outside of home again. I think that uh, we're splitting this seven point, let's say eight million dollar market up. Um, Tesla is going to take uh, at some point. They are just starting. Um, they are going to, they're going to be in a good, sh in a, in a good position with these urban charging centers. Um, and they're working smart. They're going to, they're going to take the, you know, the cream of this market. Okay. Um, so let's say, uh, all right, let's just spitball it. Okay. So let's just say, uh, it's going to be 7.7 7 million, let's say 8 million. Uh, how much are they going to take? They're going to take 40% of the other market. This, uh, they already are down, but, uh, you know, I, I think they could, uh, I could take, uh, let's double this. Let's just say 10%. So you have 8 million, 10%. That's, let's say another million. So, uh, I think, uh, Tesla with this charging, uh, consideration, we're looking at, uh, 5 million uh, vehicles a year. Okay. Uh, now that still leaves uh, you know a lot of households uh, over here but um, I don't know. I, I can't see. I see Tesla taking it. And also the fleet's uh, Lordstown Motors is in, in a good shot there. All right. Anyway, that's my take on it. Uh, again, uh, you know, the other uh, OEMs are going to split up the rest of this market and the rest of the charge at home market. But I think Tesla's, in, you know, these urban charging centers. Now, there have been some talk about Ford. They're coming out and they're going to do Walmart charging center. They're going to put charges in Walmart and so on and so forth. Might work, might not. I know there's a location uh in my hometown where whole foods had chargers installed they took them out i don't know why i think um putting them at retail i mean it might i, I mean we don't know you know what's going to keep see the thing is tesla has these private this is going to be private what is going to keep ice cars from parking at these um charge outside of home stations at walmart Who's going to stop a, a nice pickup truck from pulling in one of these chargers? I don't know. How are they going to police that? How are they going to enforce that? I think these Tesla-only private charge stations, again, they're going to take the cream of the crop out of that market as well. Let's move on to the next segment here. 
Uh, summary, Tesla is number one. Lordstown Motors and Aptera definitely have a niche. Uh, so does Archimoto. Um, I have down here GM 400, 800. We'll go through that in a minute. So I think uh, going over all this, Tesla, well, Tesla has a insurmountable need in travel charging worldwide. They have all, they have the biggest network and it's, it's growing. Now, Tesla is rapidly building a network of urban charging centers. They have the drop on the other OEMs and charging companies in centers versus individual chargers in the back of a hotel. Uh, and this is a new concept uh, being defined by Tesla. So they're not putting them in the con and they're not putting them in the Walmart parking lots. These are going in where the cars are being sold and I just define these as uh, you know urban Tesla yuppies. And I think uh, this is this is going to give them another million sales a year. Uh, the new heavy BEVs like Rivian and Hummer and the F-150 Lightning will require charge at home to use daily, in my opinion. And this limits the addressable market they have. Um, these, these batteries in these vehicles are really big. And to, you know, find a public charger and to be able to get the right charging level, I mean, it's very onerous. So I think they're going to be limited to the charge at home market. And I think all of these brands are going to be splitting up the, the million uh, cars that um, uh, Tesla isn't going to sell. Uh, because Tesla already dominates the charge at home market and has brand awareness and loyalty. If you saw there was a quote that a Ford dealer told a, a guy buying a Mustang, he said, uh, you should consider buying a Tesla. Um, so the next tier in the market after the charge at home is is the mar urban yuppie charge outside of home. Renters, restricted condos, these types of things. This is the next layer in the market. That's the next tier down. Tesla is moving fast to establish branded private urban charging centers with amenities yet to be defined, you know, the diner, the laundromat, whatever it would be. Uh, but this is the strategy they are going with versus stand-at home, uh, standalone chargers, uh, which you would find, uh, you know, when you're traveling. But in an urban area, they're they're looking to put in centers. And this is all yet to be defined. This is a new concept. No one else is doing it. And I believe this is also going to end up being a new profit center for Tesla. Uh, it's going to increase the sales of their vehicles. You know, will there be a charging surfe a fee for you? I don't know. You know, will they sell Tesla merchandise? I don't know. Will they franchise? space out in the charging center to Starbucks. Good idea. Uh, I have mentioned in a previous video about land banking, owning these pieces of land in these urban centers. This is, I think, uh, ultimately the way to go. I don't think GM or Ford or, oh, sorry, let's just go back. Uh, GM or Ford or anyone else is looking at this even looking at this yet so tesla is going to skim the top off of this charge outside of home uh, just like they have the charge at home market now i have down here gm has an advantage over other oems they have a switchable 400 to 800 volt system okay and this uses an electromechanical switch that changes the way the relay is set up in the battery uh, that allows them to change the voltage and it allows for faster charging. This is this is really a big deal. Um, I believe Porsche Taycan uses a 800 amp or a 400 amp. I forget how the electronics go, but anyway. Um, this, but they have a, 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 it's set that way. This is something that can switch 
okay? So in other words, this can give you faster charge times at a slower charger or at home or at a public charger. Now this is electromechanical, which means there's moving parts in there and they're, they're changing around the setup of the battery, uh, the way the batteries are connected to each other. So there is some type of mechanical switch there which could be a fail point. So it's yet to be tested in daily use. However, this is a GM advantage, which could come into play, and uh, you can do your own research on this. Um, are they planning uh, charging centers? I don't know. They're talking about working with charging people, um, putting in these chargers that have advertising on them and so forth. But no one is moving like Tesla is to build these centers. Okay, so you got light demand charging vehicles. These are light efficient vehicles. I think outside of Tesla, this is this is the key uh, for people that fall outside of that uh, charge at home. The endurance, the Arkimoto, uh, self charging app, Terra. Uh, they all have a niche. Uh, so it's going to be Tesla, Lordstown Motors, Archimoto, Aptera, GM has a, a, a shot here. Um, I believe the $25,000 EV is going to be the Aptera. So um, that's going to take that market niche, in, at least in the good climates around the world. Uh, but... I, I do G think GM has the advantage over the other OEMs with this switchable uh, battery configuration that um, could make a charge outside of home more palatable. And so, moving forward, these are the wild cards, okay? And, you know, there's all kind of new technology coming in unknown unknowns i have here um there's battery formulations there's a there's a graphene uh, battery uh, indestructible fast charge times you can put it in the body panels of a car because it doesn't explode like um, lithium batteries uh gruber uh, Tesla Repair has a video on this. It's pretty interesting. Welcome back to another Gruber Motor Company video series. Today we're going to blow your mind with a new battery for electric vehicles. What would you think of a Tesla that can go over 700 miles range and has a battery that can last up to 100 years? Could come. This could change everything. Okay. Uh... There are new charging schemes or systems. Tesla centers are, are way ahead, these urban charging centers, and I think they're going to be a, a staple around the country in upscale Tesla yuppie neighborhoods. Uh, the GM system, the switchable voltage system is interesting. You know, there could be induction systems where you simply pull in a parking lot and there's automatically a charger there, or road sections have uh, induction charging cables in them and the cars are capable you know these are these are in the future but uh, anyway i again i think that tesla has the advantage here now there could be a photo photovoltaic cell breakthrough uh enable more self-charging aptera like vehicles with a different form factor aptera has some of the most efficient they make their own chips uh solar cells as i understand it, and they have some of the most efficient ones um, along with a very efficient vehicle. If that were to 10x that efficiency on those solar cells, you know, a smaller patch of the car would be defined as being used as a power generator, so forth. You know, a tone, uh, a cover for a pickup bed, uh, so on. So, now this is something that I don't think anybody's thinking of here. The grid would be unable to handle more BEVs. The sales are restricted. One BEV, I have read, is the same demand on the grid as three houses. So, 
this is an eventuality that there's the grid's not going to be able to handle more BVs. When that will be, I don't know. Uh, but perhaps not that long, in, certainly in certain areas. It is an eventuality. Without uh, innovations or small battery, small efficient uh, small battery vehicles dominating. So, you know, at some times, uh, at some point they may say, you know, we can only handle, uh, we can only register X number of uh, battery electric vehicles. Uh, I think uh, all of these uh, grid companies, uh, there's one formed by uh, some former GE uh, executives, uh, EOSE, I think is the symbol. They have a, a water-based battery like the Tesla battery uh, that can store uh, electricity from the grid, but it's not flammable like the Tesla battery. That's an interesting one. DC grids, they're putting in in China. Um, at some point, you know, transformers could be blown up on the telephone poles. So, uh, you know, will sales be restricted? I mean, we don't know when this is, but it's something that you could think about. I think the grid as the, I think the penetration now is one or 2% of battery electric vehicles in the United States. As that grows, uh, and I have this in another video of mine, I've done some analysis on this, the, um, uh, the demand on the grid is going to grow. And, and again, the last thing I have down here are new ultralight vehicles uh more efficient you know like the aptera the archimoto the endurance is another design requiring smaller batteries with less demanding charging requirements there's going to be more i mean i i i think there should be more of these vehicles i think we're going in exactly the opposite direction you know with the rivian with the hummer with the lightning you know these, these are big, heavy vehicles. I think we have to look for lighter uh, uh, vehicles with smaller batteries and less demanding charging requirements, you know, to handle this grid, but also to enable more uh, uh, charge outside of home options to get wider adoption of uh, BEVs. Anyway, that's it, guys. I hope you liked the presentation. Uh, something to think about anyway. I think uh, this is a uh something that's being ignored everyone you know i'm not a fan of buffett but buffett said uh you know hedge uh, investor guy buffett said oh it's not going to happen overnight battery he's right i don't i hate to agree with him uh but um still these markets are going to be penetrated there's so many advantages to owning an electric vehicle um but this charging bottleneck is something, uh, you know, the Biden administration is trying to break through on. You know, they're talking about putting, you know, charging stations on highways. All right, great. But, you know, what about these urban centers? Anyway, I think Tesla's ahead here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you understand this torture, these torture charts and uh, logic here.